Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick. My purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. In today's video, I've got a great one because it is something that is in absolutely epidemic proportions. You probably don't even realize you have it, but I'll tell you what, it is undoubtedly causing the reason why you can't lose weight. It may be causing your food cravings. It may be causing your energy levels to tank and your fatigue levels to go up. And it may be even causing metabolic damage and metabolic disease, like things like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, you name it and that is from insulin resistance. So today we are gonna dive on in deep to this. So you wanna make sure you watch till the end and you wanna take notes on this, okay? And if anybody you know needs to see this video or hear about this video, you make sure you share it out to them. So once again, if you like what we're talking about, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And what I like to start off with is always a celebration to our keto rock stars out there. So this one, this is for actually, Barb Mattern, and this is Barb's testimonial right here. Thank you so much, Barb. I love and appreciate you. Thanks, Dr. Nick. You definitely are inspiring me. You have helped me turn my life around. I have two autoimmune diseases, and due to different medications, my weight blew right out, especially when on steroids. And by the way, we hear that all the time. Steroids really create a lot of problems. The last four years has been hell. Sorry about that. And I had high blood pressure, became pre-diabetic, also have chronic pain disorder. Since starting keto, February 19th, I've lost 19 kilograms. So that's roughly 40 plus pounds. And I'm no longer a diabetic meds or blood pressure meds. Out of all the keto vlogs, yours has become my savior. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. God bless you, Dr. Nick. And thanks again, signing off from Australia. Well, I will tell you what, the land down under, I thank you so much, Barb, for writing to us. And I'll tell you what, your testimonial and so many others are really what inspire me to do more and more videos and get this information out. So thank you so much. God bless you too. And I'll tell you what, you inspire a whole lot of people because you are a keto rock star. And so I thank you and I celebrate you so much for, for just giving us a great testimonial. Anyway, so let's go ahead and dive on in with the silent epidemic, insulin resistance. What is insulin resistance about? Well, one third of you are experiencing it and half of everyone over 60 is experiencing it. You may have things like diabetes, pre-diabetes. This sets you up for Alzheimer's, fatty liver disease. Not even if you drink, you might have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You may be experiencing heart attacks, strokes. You may have cancer. All of these things are put at higher risk if you have insulin resistance. So like I said in the intro, this is something you have to absolutely get a grip on, get a handle on it, and you might not even know you're experiencing it. Otherwise, you are set up for every single one of these disorders. Next, let's talk about what is the function or what is the purpose of insulin? What does it actually do? Well, insulin is a hormone. It's a growth hormone. It is a hormone that we use that's an anabolic hormone for growth and storage, really what it's there for. It's got a whole host of things that it helps with, everything from enzymatic processes to fatty acid, assimilation and so on, but we're going to talk primarily about how it affects our energy levels and how it affects our glucose and fuel distribution. So in the pancreas, the pancreas is what makes insulin. It's then shipped via the bloodstream to all the cells of the body. Now, what happens is when all these little receptor sites on your cells, when the receptor sites sense insulin, it opens up the gates and allows the body to bring, or the, the uh, body to allow insulin to bring sugar into your cells to be used as fuel. So one thing it does is it brings it right into the cell so that way your body can use it as, as a fuel source and burn it and carry on you know, body processes. Another thing that happens is your body wants to store some of it because it once again, we're always about survival mode. Your body doesn't know when you might have another meal coming, so it always wants energy. So it will store it in the form of glycogen in your liver and in your muscles. Now, if you have excess, in other words, you've got it all stored up in your liver, in your muscles, and there's some excess, it will be stored as triglycerides in your fat. That's where it gets dangerous, okay? So that's where the big problems start to begin. Now. 
What does insulin resistance look like? Once again, your pancreas is making your insulin. It's shipping it out to the body through the bloodstream. The problem runs in is this. All these little receptor sites that are sitting around your cell, if there's a lot of inflammation, if there's damage to those receptor sites, your body could be producing ample amounts of insulin. You could have plenty of insulin floating through your system, but your body's not hearing it. Your cells are going, I don't hear insulin out there. There's insulin there? I don't, I don't hear it. It's almost like if you're in a room and someone's outside the door and they don't even, you know, they're knocking and knocking and you're going, I don't hear anybody. That's what's going on. Insulin is knocking at the cell, you know, membrane saying, hey, open up so I can let the fuel in, let the sugars in, but what's happening instead is that the cell membrane is closing down and it's not allowing the nutrients in. So in essence, what your cells could be doing is actually starving. Now, like I said, the cell membrane is the gatekeeper that allows nutrients in. Because of damage that we're going to talk about in a little, bit, uh, a little while as to what's causing the cell antenna not to recognize the insulin, now, what happens is then your, your cells send a message back to your pancreas that says, hey, we don't hear insulin, there's no insulin, we don't see any insulin around here, so can you make more, can you send us more? And your pancreas goes, okay, we'll send more, and it keeps sending more out to the cells, and the cells keep sending messages back through this feedback loop saying, hey, I made more insulin, did you see it? And the cell's saying, no, I don't see it at all. Make more, and it keeps doing this, and eventually what happens is there cells within your pancreas called the beta cells, and that's what's making the insulin. They start to burn out, they start to become fatigued because the cycle is just going on like as if it's on a hamster wheel and you're making more and more insulin, but your cells are not seeing it. So if a doctor does a test on you, he might say, well, you've got plenty of insulin. You're not you know, diabetic. You've got plenty of insulin floating through your system. But the problem is the cell's not recognizing it, so your body is keeping too much blood sugar on the outside of the cells rather than getting it into the cells. Now, what are some signs of insulin resistance? How would you know if you've got it? Well, some basic signs are this. High levels of triglycerides, over 150. Okay, so if you have measurements over 150, you probably have insulin resistance. Also, high blood pressure. Okay, one of the signs is high blood pressure. You start to get that creeping up. Now, I know everybody wants to go by that magic number of 120 over 80, but as I said in, in previous videos, 120 over 80 is an average blood pressure. It's not normal, okay? So normal is whatever's normal for you. High is what's ever high for you. It might not be high for someone else. So if your blood pressure you start noticing is getting higher and higher, creeping up, you could have insulin resistance. Also high blood sugar. Once again, you're gonna have levels of over 100, 125. So you're gonna be pre-diabetic or diabetic at this point if it's creeping up over 125 and also high fasting blood sugar. So if you're taking your blood sugar measurements, like we always recommend using Keto Mojo, and you find your blood sugar's high even in a fasted state, so you haven't eaten all night, you're checking it in the morning and it's still high, okay, that's a good sign that you might be insulin resistant, okay? Now, what is probably one of the easiest ways to tell? Belly fat. One of the cardinal signs of having insulin resistance is the fact that you start putting on a lot of weight around your stomach. Now that becomes very dangerous. That's a very, very serious problem to have because belly fat is very different than fat, say, on the back of your thighs or on your butt. When you have belly fat, that's more visceral fat. Visceral fat means now it's inside and it's around your organs and that becomes especially dangerous, okay? And what we see with that is this. You see a lot of fat all around your organs, all around your heart, your fatty liver, around your intestinal tract and so on. Now, how does that happen? Once again, you start taking in a lot of processed refined carbohydrates. Those carbohydrates elevate your blood sugar, which means it's going to elevate your insulin levels. Your insulin levels go up. If you keep your insulin levels at a high level on a regular basis, you start to store a lot of belly fat because once again, what does insulin do? As I said before, it's for growth and storage. It's really what it's about. So if you're taking in foods that are high processed refined carbs, your body's going to go into storage mode and it's going to start to store and it's going to store especially around your waist. Now, that becomes a problem because now it starts to become more metabolic. It starts to create a lot of estrogens and you start to create more and more issues with this. But once again, anytime you start to increase your belly fat, your risk for heart disease goes up, stroke, diabetes, cancer. 
So that's why insulin resistance becomes so dangerous because it increases belly fat a lot. Now, what are some of the causes of insulin resistance? So how does your cell become so clogged and inflamed that it doesn't allow the receptor sites to read insulin? Your body's saying, hey, I sent you insulin, and your cell's going, no, you didn't. I don't see it. Why is that? Well, you look at things like too much sugar. So the biggest culprit, probably by far, is too much sugar. Sugar is highly inflammatory to the body and that inflammation starts to create a very dangerous problem around your cell membrane, okay? Next, too much processed refined carbs. So if you're thinking, hey, you know what? I don't eat sugar. No, 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 I don't have a lot of table sugar. I don't have all that white stuff. I don't have, you know, a lot of icing and cakes and things like that. Just processed refined sugars is bad enough. Your grains, your pastas, your cereal, things like that. All these sugars that we take in creates this insulin resistance. Excess body weight, like I said, you start putting on fat, especially around the waist, everywhere else too, that, that creates insulin resistance. Of course, too much belly fat, like we talked about. Lack of exercise. One of the great things about exercise is it makes your body more insulin sensitive. So insulin sensitivity is much higher when you have regular exercise. So if you're not exercising, your body's going to become more insulin resistant. Next, smoking. Okay, We all know the toxins of smoking. One thing we're seeing a lot here in the States, especially, I don't know if around the world, with so many of our other viewers is that these kids are starting to do things like vaping where you're taking in other types of you know, nicotines and other dangerous problems uh, in through this vape. So that's dangerous too, but smoking creates a lot of problems with insulin resistance and skimping on sleep. This is something that was really bothering me for a long time. I kept thinking, I mean, I'm like Superman. I don't need much sleep. I can go on four or five hours. I'm good. But one thing I find is that when I skimp on my sleep, I will start putting more weight around my waist. Probably one of the biggest reasons is because your body is not reducing the cortisol levels. If you don't reduce the cortisol levels and that stress hormone, you start to put on body fat around the waist, which once again, kicks this whole thing into high gear. So what are some solutions for insulin resistance? What can you be doing to make your body better at burning fats for fuels, but also burning sugars for fuels? And the key thing starts with the ketogenic diet. Why? Because the ketogenic diet removes the inflammation in your body. It also converts your body from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. So you're not so insulin dependent. Because your body's not burning so much glucose for fuel as it is fats, your body can switch. And when it makes that switch, it reduces inflammation because one of the biggest reasons why you have inflammation around your cell is because of the processed refined carbohydrates and sugars. So the ketogenic diet is the best way to actually flip the switch and reverse insulin resistance. Some of the other things to do, of course, are intermittent fasting. A lot of people in our program are doing intermittent fasting because it really helps to shorten up your eating window. So what that means is you eat for a shorter period of time and you fast for a longer period of time. Typically it's 16 hours that you're not eating and you eat for then eight hours. So most of our clients are eating from say 12 to 8 p.m. at night stop eating and then don't eat until about noon the next day. Because you're doing that, what it's doing is giving your body time to not have to spike insulin. Anytime you eat, unless you're just eating pure fat, anytime you eat, whether it be proteins or carbs, your body's gonna secrete insulin, okay? It's gonna raise insulin levels, obviously higher with carbs than it does protein, but you're still gonna make insulin. Now, by shortening up your eating window, it means your body's not gonna produce insulin near as much during the course of the day, and it's gonna help you lose weight, it's gonna help you get over metabolic disorders, things like diabetes, your cancers, your, your pre-diabetes, your Alzheimer's, your stroke, all gonna be reduced by the ketogenic diet combined with intermittent fasting. So it is the one-two punch to really kickstart your results and get you to best gains when it comes to overall changing and transforming your health. Next, cut out snacking, like I said, when you're not eating during certain times of the day, of course, you're keeping your insulin down. The longer you can keep your insulin down all day long, the better off you're gonna be. You're gonna burn more fat because your body's gonna look to the fat sources rather than your snacks. It's gonna look to your fat reserves to burn and it's gonna help to get you leaner and more cut, more fit, better energy. Overall, everything's a plus. Next, exercise. As I said before, insulin, um, 
insulin sensitivity is going to increase with regular exercise. So this is by far one of the best things you can do to help your body become more insulin sensitive. So I hope this is great information for you. If so, you know what to do. Please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much. I love and appreciate you guys. And thank you so much for writing those testimonials. You guys are keto rock stars. And I appreciate you more than you know. This is Dr. Nick. Have a great night or a great day or wherever you are in the world. Be blessed. Take care. Bye-bye.